Hello. Uh, a little while ago I did a review of the Topping NX3 and it is a external uh, headphone amplifier. It's an analog input and an analog output. Today I'm going to look at the Topping NX4 which is a uh, very similar look and feel and it also has a uh, analog input and an analog output has the same controls, the volume, the bass boost, and uh, the gain switch. But the NX4 uh, is also a DAC, and it uh, also uh, accommodates uh, DSD signals. So I'll try to make a few measurements. I'll do a quick teardown and look at the uh, insides. We'll take a look at the circuit board. Here we can see the model number and version number of this uh, circuit board. It appears to be a version 2.2 right here. And I've been surprised uh, at the component makeup of this circuit board. It is primarily, uh, the ICs are made by Texas Instruments, XMOS, and ESS. So I'm going to apologize for how the slow update rate of my microphone, or the slow update rate of my USB camera here. Uh, this is the USB power input to charge the lithium single cell battery. These are the ICs that uh, manage the charging of the lithium battery. It's a linear charger. These are UN8HX and uh, these are both uh, 500 milliamp chargers. I'm thinking they might be in parallel. Uh, I haven't really fully traced out this circuit board just yet. Uh, when I have this attached to my charger, it draws uh, about 900 milliamps. Some cool features of this circuit board are here is a uh, little spring that uh, will rub up against the top of the chassis. And here is another spring down here. You can just barely see it. I'm pointing at it. This is a kind of a spring-loaded pogo that uh, will touch the back of the chassis. It's a nice touch. I couldn't really quite make out the part number of this IC, but this looks like this is going to be a, uh, a boost or a buck boost converter from the uh, battery, which feeds three linear regulators which are for the digital circuitry. This is kind of a interesting little chip. This is made by TI. It's an LM2776, which is a switched, capa uh, switched capacitor inverter. And it is converting 3.3 volts to negative 3.3 volts. We come right here, this IC is a Texas Instruments TPS 65130. It's a split rail converter. This is a DC to DC converter, which will take in the, uh, you know, probably 3.3 volts and converts it to a plus nine and a negative nine. I think it's actually a little lower than that. It's about 8.7 volts. And uh, this voltage, these plus and minus voltages are used for the uh, output the uh, headphone output and input amplifiers and that's where we will go right next these two amplifiers are similar or the same they are Texas Instruments OPA 1688 in the Sound Plus family from Texas Instruments 
and uh, I've used these uh, parts before on other projects and they work very well they sound good and uh, what's nice is they are rated to uh, down to 16 ohms and so this so will have uh, plenty of power to drive low impedance headphones this I see here is a OPA 2140 made by Texas Instruments and I believe this is the input the analog input uh, buffer if I slide all the way over here this is the USB audio input right here this connector which feeds a XMOS XU208 this is the USB bridge and we scoot a little bit over here to the left and this is a X uh, I'm sorry this is the ESS Sabre DAC this is the ES9038 Q2M variant this is a pretty well regarded DAC and uh, right on the output of this DAC are three Texas Instruments OP1652 op amps and uh, I uh, believe that these are forming a cascaded um, low-pass filter, meaning that the uh, output comes from this DAC and then goes to each one of these op amps in series. Um, haven't totally verified that, but uh, I think that's what's happening. On the other side of the circuit board, there's not uh, a whole lot of active circuitry, but uh, I thought I'd show you this cool little pogo uh, connector that uh, hits the back of the aluminum chassis. Uh, I can't zoom out far enough with my microscope here, but we can see that uh, they've rated this battery at approximately 8.9 watt hours and 2.4 amp hours here we can see some uh, nice quality capacitors WEMA brand and some Omron signal relays so actually some uh, pretty high quality parts in this design I'm going to make all of my measurements into a 47 ohm load so you can see uh, this little adapter I've got right here and uh, I'll be making uh, most all the measurements with this uh, analog um, I'm sorry this audio precision P1 plus analyzer I'm set up. I'm just going to look at one channel at a time. I'm feeding the output of the audio precision analyzer here. The output of the topping comes to here into our 47 ohm load and green which is the uh, analyzer input. I'm going to make uh, most of my measurements with uh, or with a hundred millivolt uh, RMS uh, output and that's what I'm set up right now I'll zoom into this screen and for this test I'm going to turn the volume all the way up and we will run a frequency response test here we go for the uh, first measurement and I need to apologize again the gimbal on my camera seems to sweep up and down and I think this uh, should be readable as we can see here I am my output is 100 millivolts my gain setting on the NX4 is full and 
my output is 99 millivolts. I'm going to reference this to dBs. So we're 0 dBr. I'm going to come into sweep and we'll do the sweep. Here's the results. We can see that it has a very flat frequency response and we are basically flat up to 18 kilohertz and our 6 dB down point is roughly 22 kilohertz. The low frequency response we're flat to roughly 30 hertz and our 6 dB down point is roughly 15 hertz. Pretty good uh, frequency response. Here's the same frequency sweep but with the bass boost enabled. So we can see that there is roughly a 5 dB boost and that is mainly say the peak is around 30-40 Hertz little effect at 700 Hertz 3 dB up at 134 Hertz so a little a, a decent bass boost To check the gain switch of the NX4, I'm going to decrease my input voltage. Let's go to 20 millivolts. We have 20 millivolts out. And let's go to 1.0 dB reference. I'm going to zero that. Flip the switch. So about uh, 9 dB of gain. Let's check the uh, THD. We're again we're going to be 100 millivolts and my output is 100 millivolts with my uh, gain knob turned all the way clockwise and let's look at THD. This is for the analog input. Oh, very low, 0.008%. While we're at this uh, setting of 100 millivolts input, 100 millivolts out, so a unity gain, uh, let's look at our uh, signal to noise ratio. So at 90 dB, uh, well, 89, but essentially 90 dB. Uh, that is uh, pretty good for uh, this low of a signal input. And if I were to increase the uh, input voltage uh, up to bore, up to just prior to clipping, uh, we could get this uh, signal to noise ratio uh, up a lot higher. I typically just measure at 100 millivolts input. Now I'm going to make some digital measurements. I have right now a wave file of 1 kilohertz sampled at 44.1 kilohertz and it is transmitting through this USB cable and the uh, 1 kilohertz waveform is full scale digitally and uh, I've adjusted my volume here to where I am getting 100 millivolts output and I've adjusted the audio precision analyzer to track at 1 kilohertz. I am also sending the USB signal through a USB isolator. This is an optical isolator so there is no galvanic connection between these two points and so I will not be picking up any noise uh, or ground loops um, from my computer. I will look at a couple of different different signals. I'll look at uh, 1 kilohertz sampled at 44.1 kilosamples 
and 1 kilohertz sampled at 192 kilo samples and I'll also look at silence uh, sampled at 44.1 kilo, kilo samples. Here is my 1 kilohertz signal sampled at 44.1 kilohertz. I am measuring a distortion of 0 0.005 4%. Here is the 1 kilohertz signal sampled at 192 kilosamples per second and uh, a little interesting in that it is measuring ever so slightly less distortion. Here is our silence sampled at 44.1 kilosamples and uh, so we are getting a reading of 3.3, 3.4 microvolts. This is going to be a kind of your background noise with uh, silence or all zeros being fed to the DAC. I should mention the LEDs on the front of the unit. Uh, when it's turned on, there's a pretty blue LED. On the back, there is a red LED which notes that the battery is charging. This will go green when the battery is fully charged. I'm currently playing audio. And after my computer recognizes that this device is plugged in and switches over to it, it just went blue that indicates that uh, it's uh, decoding the uh, a standard bitstream and it will go red if, a, if it uh, detects a DSD bitstream. Okay, what can I say? Uh, this unit uh, performs well. It's quiet. It's very well made. Uh, the circuit board design looks good, the assembly looks good. Uh, I'm surprised with the amount of uh, US uh, designed and manufactured uh, con uh, you know, semiconductors in the inside. The battery has the appropriate safety circuits. Uh, it's a good sized battery so it should last a long time and uh, it sounds really good to me. Uh, it, uh, I haven't used the DSD feature, but uh, the standard uh, USB bitstream uh, sounds really good. Sounds uh, better than the uh, decoder that is uh, in my uh, computer that I typically listen to. Uh, well, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, let me uh, know. And if you uh, like this type of review, uh, hit the subscribe. Thanks.